I hate menu planning and grocery shopping as much as anyone. I think people think that because I like to cook that I really like this part of cooking and I hate it. So I always do it on Sundays and get it out of the way so I only have to go to the grocery one time a week. More than hating of planning though, the reason I do it is I hate wasted food. And so the very first thing I do when I plan a menu is I go through my pantry and my freezer and my fridge and I look through anything that is left over that I need to use up. And that kind of dictates the menu. So I know the reason we had bolognese on Monday is I had these kind of random cans of diced tomatoes. And um, I, I don't like dinners without something green in it. So I added spinach salad. And the reason I added spinach salad is because I knew I had a bag of almonds I wanted to use up in the salad. Um, you'll see like there's chicken yoki soup on Tuesday. That's going to only use four potatoes. So that bag of potatoes is going to turn into a potato bar on Sunday night. Um, I had some broth left over, which is why there are two soups on the menus for this week. But when I look across, um, I only cook dinner Sunday night through Wednesday night. There usually should be enough food uh, leftovers that we have leftovers on Thursday night. We have frozen pizza on Fridays and we usually order in on Saturdays. So when I look at that, um, it's planned out based on my prep time. So chicken yoki takes a lot more time than the mushroom soup. Tuesday, I have time to cook. Wednesday, I absolutely don't. So those meals are actually scheduled based on my schedule during the day and what kind of prep time I have the night before or the day of. The other thing I think about when I plan my schedule is I'm much like you making lunch at the same time as I'm making breakfast. And so I have one child in school every other day. I have one child in school every day. I have one who packs. I have one who only packs on occasion. And so the best thing I can do is make sure that if a lunch is going on the stove, a breakfast is not going on the stove and vice versa. The last thing I wanna do at 6.30 in the morning is pull out four different pots and pans. So for example, you can see if I made egg wraps for breakfast, which took up two burners on Monday morning, you're getting a BLT for lunch. Um, there's just too many dishes. So um, the dinners are also planned based on what season of life we're in. If I have two kids in sports, this is a lot more planned out and that probably every meal for one week would be chicken or every meal would have been a soup and sandwich that I could have pre-prepped on Sunday night. If I have a kid in volleyball and a kid in cross country at the same time, dinners have to be made before we get home. If I only have one kid in sports and activities, I might have time to get half of it prepped and the rest made when they get home. So a lot of these meals are constructed based on how much needs to be prepped the night before, how much I can do the morning of or the day of, and exactly how much time they take from the moment we walk back in the door after, after school activities to how long I want it to be on the table. Um, and that's why you can see some of the like scribbling underneath as to what people have. Our actual family schedule is kept there on a computer. Um, that's why you don't see a lot of what you need to have in your backpack when you walk out the door because that's up on the computer, but it used to be here. Um, yeah, so this is how I stay sane and I dare anyone in this house to ask me what's for dinner. They know better. It's all written down. I'm a parent of an eighth grader at Sycamore and a graduate who is a freshman in high school. And Holly Lee asked if I would share some tips on how I make dinner time fast and easy for my family. Uh, I am actually a nurse by training, but I did go to cooking school and I've taken a lot of cooking classes. And um, so I spent a lot of time in the kitchen. Uh, I only have one rule in my house about eating, and that is if it's prepared well, it's edible and it's delicious and you should eat it. It's been proven that the only genetic variants we have in taste are in cilantro, which can taste like soap to some people, and in Brussels sprouts. So at my house, everything else is, you're gonna eat it if it's on the plate. Um, some of the co most common mistakes I see people making in the kitchen I wanna share with you right off is if you're cooking with a meat-based protein, it should always be rinsed and dried before you cook it. A lot of people fail to season their chicken uh, when they're cooking it. You get a lot of bland chicken and tomatoes, corns, and potato 
Uh, potatoes, corn, and tomatoes should never go in the fridge. A tomato in the fridge will turn mealy within an hour and the starches in corn and potatoes uh, change if you put them in a refrigerator. I, I like frozen vegetables. I know I have all my fresh vegetables out here. I like frozen veggies. Those are great, especially when things are off season. The only frozen veggie I absolutely will not cook with is spinach. I find that when you freeze spinach, it concentrates the flavor of iron and it makes it way too strong. I grew up eating canned and frozen spinach. I've never made my kids do it. I prefer fresh spinach. Also, it adds too much water to whatever recipe I'm making. Um, some quick uh, time-saving tips. I'm not big on owning a lot of tools, believe it or not. I only have one tool drawer. I have one crock for spoons. I do have an addiction to bowls, pots, and pans. My husband calls me nine pot, and that's fair. The amount of dishes I generate is pretty disgusting, but I keep my tools pretty simple and I like to keep them all in the same place. I think my family gets up in the middle of the night and moves them around to play with me. So the best thing you can invest in in your kitchen is a decent set of knives. This has carrot on it. Uh, knives are, that's it. Everything is about your knives. Everything is about chopping. All of cooking is cutting something up. So I am a huge fan of knives. I, it doesn't really matter. There's a lot of great brands out there. I don't, I don't really would say I would recommend one brand over the other. I cooked with Wustoffs for many, many years and loved them. Um, I switched to Cutco's a few years ago because they will actually come to my house and sharpen them for me. And I've been very, very happy with those just as well. They're great. Um, so right knife is for the right job. If I'm cutting vegetables, I'm using my vegetable knife. That thing will go through a watermelon in two seconds. If I'm cutting meat, I'm using a meat knife. If you've ever chopped bacon with a meat knife, you will understand the difference between using a chef's knife and a meat knife on cutting meat. It's so much easier. If I'm cutting tomatoes, I'm obviously using a serrated knife to cut through the skin or a pepper and a paring knife for all kinds of small chopping jobs. Some, some time-saving tips though on chopping. So the first thing I do if I'm cooking a recipe, I make sure everything I need is out of the fridge and the pantry in one trip. You will waste your time in a kitchen moving around your kitchen. So if I'm cooking, everything comes out that I need and everything's going into a nasty trash bowl. I'm not gonna open up my trash can 100 times while I'm cooking. I peel and chop everything right into there. If I'm not gonna be cooking it right away and I need it to go in the fridge, I have my Tupperware that it's going into all ready to go. I'm actually not a big fan of fresh garlic. I love it, I think it tastes great. I think it is more time than bang for the buck. Not gonna lie, I used canned garlic all the time. So, those are some hints on getting your workspace ready, use the right knives, and the only tool that I couldn't live without besides my knives is my mandolin. So I've got some carrots here. I'm making a chicken gnocchi soup tonight for dinner, which I actually don't like to make because gnocchi takes forever. My daughter's smiling behind me. It's one of my family's favorite meals. I have yet to find a pre-prepared gnocchi that's any good, so that means I have to make it from scratch, which means I'm making so much of it, we're eating it for like a week because I can't stand making it. Uh, but okay, so a mandolin, the only trick about a mandolin, you can flip the sides to make it thin or thick depending on what you're cutting. Never, ever, ever take your eyes off a mandolin while you're chopping, unless you like ERs and stitches. They are that bad. So if I'm gonna be making soup, I'm gonna have to cut a ton of vegetables. And I want everything to be as even as possible when I'm making soups. So this is gonna make everything the exact same. So that's an example of how I love my mandolins. I actually need a new one. That one's getting pretty dull. I've had that one for many years. The other trick, if you're cooking an onion, here's an onion. An onion will go right through a mandolin, a sweet pepper as well, and then you can just chop it up and that's your soup. But I wanna show you if you don't have a mandolin and you wanna make really fast work of an onion. Sarah, if you can zoom in here for this. The fastest work you can make of an onion is to do vertical slices across the top. And you're gonna make a couple of horizontals right into that onion. What I've done is this is one onion that I've cut apart and peeled. So I just got a piece on it there. And then as I cut, oh, tuck your fingers in. Little hint there from cooking school. And as I cut across, I have a chopped onion. And so those are some ways to make your cooking space, as we know in cooking school, mise en place, fast, 
easy to clean, one trip to the fridge, one trip to the pantry, wash your hands before you start, pull your hair back, throw everything in a bowl, one trap to the trash can, and it saves you some time. I guess if I mention chicken gnocchi, it's only fair that I tell you how to make gnocchi. And I'm happy to share the recipe. It's on my website, Wisdom Comes Suddenly, and on the left margin is a link to all of my recipes and all the food I make. You have to go a couple of pages deep on the recipes, but you can find creamy chicken yoki soup. And the reason I do go through the stress of making it is because it contains carrots, celery, onions, red bell pepper, peas, spinach, and potato. So the fact that my family loves it and it gets all of the vegetables in one bowl, I'm willing to do it. So yoki, you take four white potatoes, peel them, boil them, cool them and then mash them. You're gonna put them in a bowl, not with any salt, butter, or milk. Just take a potato masher and just mash them up or you can use a mixer, whatever you wanna do. But it's a plain mashed potato, four of them. And then you put in two eggs and about two cups of flour. And you mix it up into this horrible mixture. And then you take it and roll it into balls. And then it's really a total of four cups of flour, but two of those cups are gonna end up on your countertop. So you have to work it in. Can you zoom in there, kiddo? There's a bag of flour. So then you're gonna take it, it's a mess. It's potato pasta is what it is. If it breaks, I do not mess with it. I just start that one over because then you'll be messing with it all day trying to get it back into its original snake. And you're just gonna flip it and work that flour in. And you can make the gnocchi any size you want. I do it all at once, but um, that way I don't have to, I can do everything really quickly. And the traditional way to do gnocchi is to use a fork and you're gonna go across and use the tines to make the little indentations. And then you just use a knife and there you have it. You have little pieces of gnocchi. Now, if you wanna store them until you're ready to cook them, they have to be stored with a ton of flour or they will stick together and they have fresh egg in it so you can't store them out. And the only key to making a good gnocchi soup is that broth has to be boiling very, very hot as you drop them in. Because if you drop a dumpling into a broth that is not boiling, they will all stick together and create sludge. So that is how you make gnocchi if you ever have a bunch of time that you want to kill on a Sunday. Thanks.